Hello viewers, the most stupid race in Gran Turismo 7 has returned. It's a race that comes about every now and then, and for those who have not seen it before, it starts off as a bit of a slipstream battle. You're going to be jostling for position before you get to the final corner, and then it's a mad dash to the line. And to make things a bit more interesting, they've added Nitrous this time around. So this adds another element of strategy. And for this race, we have a choice of 10 different cars. And because I don't know any better, I'm going to go for the Chiron. Okay, we're in, but pretty much everyone is in the Mercedes AMG. This is very rare in Gran Turismo 7 to actually have nitrous. With all of that said, let's jump into the very first race. And having played this a couple of times in the past, I know that at least at the beginning, it's always going to be a bit of a bump drafting battle, trying to edge your way towards the front of the pack, but also just making sure that you don't get cut adrift from the slipstream as the guy behind seems to have done already so overtaking some of these stray cars if we can already bumping up with uh, Dane Rampster here and it's going to look quite <laughs> peculiar I think the word is um, this type of race it plays quite l not like any other race that you ever see on Gran Turismo or any other race you'll see on any racing game for that matter uh, with a long line of cars bump drafting each other. So Rampster gets caught out of the line there, but he's, is he going to tuck back in? Yes, he is at the last moment. And that's the danger, I think, on this uh, on this race. That if you try to overtake and you pull out of the line, you kind of get into no man's land, really, as uh, Insomni Racer there moving out to the left. He's going to try a move and it's not quite going to work, but luckily for him, uh, the pack in front seems to spread out and sometimes this happens now i'm just trying to pick my path through all of the madness right up behind kirith here i'm going to try and bump right through the middle and so you have all these opposing factions just look at the radar with pretty much everyone on the screen at the same time it really is quite ridiculous heading into the first of two big banked ovals and there was a bit of a kerfuffle there. A couple of cars sent spinning into the realm of the shadows. And I find myself in third place. This is going fairly well so far. Uh, just trying to move towards the front. And uh, Kirith here also in the Bugatti. And most people in the Mercedes. Roswald there in the Mercedes AMG at the front. So the 10 cars they give you for this race are all tuned to be somewhat similar. So, I mean, the Bugatti Chiron, you know, if, if all the cars were stock, then, you know, this would be the quickest car, but it's not quite how this race works. 273 miles per hour as we bump each other down the back straight. Rather insane levels of speed here. Can you imagine actually doing this in real life? It would be so, so crazy. But here we go then, into the final corner. The finish line is not long after this corner, but we still have a good 30 seconds or so to get to the line. So, so you can see the other guys on the bottom of the track there already deploying their nitrous. I'm just going to start using mine now. Perhaps it's too late, but we're going to try and get back past with the slipstream and the nitrous. But have I got my timing right or have I got it wrong? We're coming back now at these guys. Kirith gets run into the barrier. And I'm into the back of Insomni Racer, and as we come up to the line, it's going to be a P4. Oh, that was intense. Four tenths away in fourth. I didn't quite get the timing right with the NOS at the end there. This is going to be tough to win. I want to check out this replay and see what I did wrong. I think tactically I played this race okay. I got through to the front group, managing to get into this front group. So I think that was okay. Oh, there's a massive choke point. So these guys are driving on this part of the road, but you've got to watch out because just before the corner, it narrows. <laughs> Ouch. I didn't use my NOS until quite late. Let's, let's see when I... I mean, these guys are already using theirs. 
Roswald just started using his. He, he won the race. When did he start using it? About now. So he gets onto the corner and then starts using it, and he timed it pretty well. Because as he gets to the end here, he's, he's just running out. So that's the right time to start using it, I think. What on earth is that? Well, guys, I think I've seen everything now. Oh, my God. All right, race number two. I'm going to go for the RX-7. I think this has got the best power to weight ratio. And with that in mind, we jump into race number two. And this started off really well. Clearly, that power to weight ratio working in my favor. Look at this wheel spin in third and fourth gear, well above 100 miles an hour. A bit of nitrous. This car clearly accelerates a lot faster than the others. Look at this, going flying through the pack already. And um, this is going to be quite um, effortless to get towards the front of the pack. Um, but we'll see if we can maintain it a bit longer. So uh, Scotty there, a little bit slow. We're going to go flying through. And it's myself and another RX-7, as you can see. We're both going to go towards the front. I've got the momentum, and therefore I think I might as well capitalise on it and go towards the front rather than bump drafting. Likewise here, and you see the reaction on my face. That, that was uh, pretty unexpected, to be honest. I didn't really know what to expect from this car, but clearly it's good. Now I'm going to block off the right-hand side here, try to get a train formed, and hopefully I can stay at the front of it. And, you know, this is the really difficult tactical element of this race where I'm at the front, this is where I need to be, this is where I need to finish, but I need to hopefully keep everyone in line. But that is not going to happen here as this Mercedes has bolted quite early. And I suppose, you know, there's this element of nitrous where you want to save it for the very end of the race, but you can always use it you know, part way through the race just to get yourself towards the front and uh, get, give yourself a better position for that final jolt towards the line. And uh, we're heading in towards the first corner here. Still in a good position towards the front. A couple of cars just hitting each other uh, as we go into the turn. There is a bit of a narrowing there, as we saw. So through the corner, I'm sensing that things are getting quite hard in the Mazda. What I'm seeing is that perhaps people don't want to quite get behind me. They'd rather get behind another Mercedes. I suppose it's one of those psychological factors in this race. And it's just how it plays out where uh, the, the, the drivers want to get behind the car they think is strongest. It's like you're gambling on the strongest car. And that's very understandable. And they're seeing this RX-7, this completely different colour car, this completely different car, and they're not really taking it too seriously. So that's the one disadvantage you have, I suppose, in trying to go with an alternative option. So down the back straight here, you can see clearly that we're losing a lot of position, a lot of ground down now into P6, albeit with the car in front with a penalty. It's quite tough now. Down into P6... This car doesn't quite have the speed. It doesn't quite have the straight line speed, so no one wanted to get behind me. So I'm going to have to time this night just really well and hope for the best. So yeah, this car clearly had good acceleration initially, but the top end isn't quite there. Maybe just lacking two or three miles per hour. And that gives the upper hand to the Mercedes. But let's see if we can get this right. Already deploying the nitrous as we head onto the banking, the final corner of the race. If I can get this right, I might be in with a chance of a podium, but just trying to jostle for position here. We're actually going to have a massive moment at 270 miles per hour, almost losing control of the car. That would have been guaranteed Shadow Realm. But here we go, up to the line. It's going to be P5. I gave that one my all. I think that was the best I could get. I mean, I think I did okay there. The, the Mazda just doesn't quite have the straight line speed. Man, this is like... <laughs> I've got to say, this is so tactical. This is so tactical. Guys, a reminder. I'm doing a giveaway oh, on this Fanatec DD Pro. Details in the description. Okay, right, next race. I'm going to the dark side. I'm so sorry. I'm choosing the Mercedes. Eventually, it had to be done. We're jumping into the Meta. 
the car that everyone's choosing, the car that is at the top of the time trial leaderboard and the car that is seeming to win most of the races. Now initially here we are going to get overtaken by this Chiron, fair enough, we can uh, just tuck into position. As ever this race is very much about tactical awareness, patience and just trying to make sure you put yourself in favourable positions and not unfavourable ones. Sounds easy, but you know, there's 12 of us here trying to do exactly the same thing. And for the most part, we cancel each other out. So already, the guy in 12th has been cut adrift. And so the 12 competitors really comes down to 11 now. So just taking a look in front, there is one, or well, I say there's one line, there isn't really one line at all. Trying to just decide which car to back. And we're going to go with the Mercedes. You know, we've got to follow team orders from Toto Wolf, as he would want us to work together rather than side with the alternative manufacturers. So heading down the hill here, 200. Can we hit 273? Yes, we can. Just about. Incredible speed here being reached. I wouldn't want to know what the fuel economy is at well we actually hit 274 there momentarily which is quite crazy they should actually put a petrol station halfway through this race which i think would be a good idea but um well i suppose that's the pit lane isn't it why, why would i say that anyway on to the corner the first corner normally a point of contention within the one lap of special stage route x that guy gets bumped going to go past him normally you can take some alternative lines here as the cars tend to spread out the Chiron here is going to get uh, ground up against the wall on the left hand side and this is what I mean by positioning you just want to make sure you're not in the wrong place at the wrong time there almost could have been pushed into the wall this is getting very feisty indeed and I'm lucky I managed to get through that without getting spun out which can so easily happen and now we're just trying to settle back down and try to find the longest line. A bit of NOS used to try to get myself back in line. The two cars on the left, they're kind of in no man's land over there. And now they're going to come across. We're going to try and fight for this position. And I'm going to find myself behind one of these two lines here. It's changing. It's constantly a changing picture. And you have to just make the right decision. And I'm going to settle in here behind Dinlo underscore 85. And now it's a three-way battle. Look at this. As the Chiron now gets cast aside, we're going to fight for position behind the Mercedes. And the Chiron has not been let in and is going to have to settle for a position further back in the pack. So lots of tactical fighting here. I'm in P6, obviously the best position. But I'm going for P1 here. That's what we want. And uh, we've survived. That tick has been ticked off on the list. But now, are they trying to tuck into one single file line? Yes, they are. Can I get in? This is quite a crucial moment, as I don't want to be cast aside. And you see that Dinlo just stays to the right, and that gives me the space then to jump into the left-hand side. I'll say, thank you very much. I'll take that position. Tempo there, going out to the outside as well. I'll take that position as well. Once you move outside, you're just really not going to gain the speed at all. So you have to make sure you get it right. I think he's going to use his NOS. He's coming back on my right-hand side here. But this is the important moment, timing this nitrous. So as we come onto the corner here, just going to start pressing it now. So it's game on. The race is on. This is where the race really begins. It's a matter of survival up until that point. We're going to go low. We're going to try to engineer a position on the right-hand side in the slipstream of Heaton 93. As we head towards the final uh, part of this final turn, this is going to be very, very close indeed. Let's take a look. Can I win this race? Come on, 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 come on. <laughs> I swear that flashed. I swear that said I was first. Oh my God, my heart rate. Got a trophy. What's that for? Drive 500 miles on an oval. Lovely. 0.02. Two. It doesn't get much closer than that. You can see just how close this was at the end. There's the line. Oh, 
man. This guy doesn't seem too excited that he's just witnessed the best finish of all time. Okay, we go once again. We cannot have a second place. Not good enough. Race number four. Once again in the Mercedes. Let's try and get this one one better. Let's go for that first place. Let's see if we can do it. Now, initially, I noticed the Lamborghini starting behind did not get a good launch at all. So I was able to pull away a bit of nitrous and I was able to cut adrift the guys in the bottom four of the pack. You see, that was actually quite a smart decision because those guys back there have already been cut adrift. So that was a couple of less players to have to contend with. Although there's some chance they could come back if we start fighting. And it actually looks like that guy has dropped back to actually perhaps give them a bit of toe. But anyway, trying to pick our way through this group now. As we go over the hill, back down the other side. I mean, this hill alone, or this bridge, whatever you want to call it. Massive engineering project. I mean, I'm really curious about this whole circuit, to be honest. Special Stage Route X. Obviously a big port there on the right-hand side. There is an airport as well on the other side of the track. Then just the fact alone of having 20 miles of tarmac, dead flat, two big ovals with runways for, for planes, a port for uh, the the ships. I mean, what even is this place? It's, it's so peculiar to me. Um, but if we get aside from um, all of the engineering and get back to the race, we find ourselves here in P5. We have a skyline amongst us. Uh, there is an imposter. Uh, shall we try and go to the inside? Yes, we do not want to get caught on the wrong side here. We get a couple of bumps. We're all going to keep going though. And so that's good. We don't want a, a big pile up. Or maybe you do. I don't know. But we're going to get a bump here from behind. And I'm just deciding which car to back here. I'm going to go to the left. And hope that this is the correct side to go on as um, you know often the pack gets quite fragmented on that corner and so you have to try and pick the right side to go and just hope that people join your cause which appears to be happening as we now once again form back into a line as we get back onto this second straight and so this is going rather well this is a good position to be in I'm quite happy here but of course uh, we have to try to get into first uh, that's kind of how it works but we have at least a minute or more than a minute to try to get this done now the two uh, lines behind jostling to try to get behind me and that is causing a bit of an issue as I'm receiving some hits at a funny angle and there's a very good chance that I could get spun out if I don't react correctly but keeping it calm you can see the cold-blooded concentration upon my eyes as we now enter the final corner, this is it. Onto the nitrous. Nitrous has been engaged. And it's like a scene out of Fast and Furious with many cars dicing for position. As we now tuck into the slipstream of the car in front, 276 miles an hour being reached. 277, 278, 9, 281 as we get a bump from behind. It's going to be a victory, surely. Come on! Yes! Oh, yes! yes! Come on! Get in there, Lewis! Miracles do happen, mate! Woo! Fastest lap, obviously, because there's only one lap. Oh my goodness, look at that. 0 0.033. Pulled a blinder there, guys. Pulled an absolute blinder. I want to go through my thinking process on this race. So at the beginning, starting eighth, the main thing here is to not get cut adrift from the front group. If you if you lose slipstream, it's probably game over. I actually lose a bit of NOS here just to make sure I didn't lose that group. So the guys in front were getting away slightly and the guys behind, as you can see in the distance, I thought, if you can cut them adrift, then cut them adrift. It sounds really harsh, but the less competitors you have, the better. Now this group got quite fragmented. You're trying to always pick the longest line and if someone's slow like that, I think just go past them. But then you see here, I'm behind the longest line. I think that tends to work. So here again, that guy was slow. I think I can go past him. 
le he left the space so again I'm still behind the longest line so we pushed each other all the way until the first corner and this is where things normally spread out a bit so yes we have a line but this is probably always going to happen it's going to spread into two lines or a bit of a mess and it's up to you to pick the, the correct way through so I thought there's this car on my left I'm just going to try and go low and make sure we don't get hit into the wall and uh, luckily we got through there and then here just picking which car to go behind I wasn't sure and then I got bumps from behind and I felt like okay let's go to the left I think getting this nice drop off from this oval is actually quite nice there on that left hand side you get a nice run onto this straight so I boosted this guy we managed to get ahead of him who's on his own he's not really getting boosted and you see everyone decided to form up behind me this is a really good position to be in at uh, not quite the front but uh, in in the best line towards the front of the line so this this part was a bit ropey i looked behind i could see that the cars were spreading so i knew that this would get a little bit tricky here you can see at one point this guy tried to turn back across he wanted to get back in line and so i was receiving a couple of hits and this is where things can get a little bit feisty people behind fighting for position you have to make sure you stay right behind this guy in front you are going to get some hits and sometimes you have to react to it and make sure you don't spin out but here it settled back in so it was fine and then coming on to the final corner this was the really important part you see why you start using my nos now and that's about the right time make sure you save 95 percent of your nitrous for this this final section i'm in a good position here i've got the slipstream i get a bump that really helped that really really helped so making as much of the slipstream as i can still using the nos all the way and then making sure we fake out this guy somewhat so that he doesn't turn across me and block me and then it's a run to the line there is a lot of luck involved but i think that was a general good plan and i just ran out of nos about one second before the line and there we go win number 113 on this account pretty happy with that so guys i'm gonna leave it there i do think that's enough special stage route x for me for a good couple of months don't forget the dd pro giveaway in the description all details down there have an amazing day catch you next time goodbye